Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well, and thank you for watching this clip on Remender Theorem. Where in this clip explaining how and why it works, the Remender Theorem probably is best explained by doing an example. So let's take a look at the first example here. We're given a polynomial, and we want to find how f of 3, evaluated at 3, how is it related to this division? Of course, in order to find a re remainder, or technically we should be dividing it. So let's split the paper in half and let's see what happens. Okay, so f of 3, that's pretty easy to evaluate. So it's square minus x minus 2, the whole thing, x evaluated at 3. So I have 9 minus 3 minus 2, the answer is 4. And that's it. Now, how on earth is this related to this division? Well, I don't know about you, long division is not one of my favorite things to do, but at, but in order to do this one, maybe you can see. So the first term is going to go x over here. Where I'm matching the leading term minus 3x. I'm doing subtraction because it's division. As you can see, x squared minus x squared goes away. Minus x minus minus become plus. Okay, so I have a 2x over here, minus 2. Right? And then matching the leading term, I'm going to add a 2 over there. So 2x minus 6. Again, I'm doing subtraction. So it's minus 2 minus minus 6, which is positive 4. And hey, what do you know? This is exactly the same. So why on earth, this is obviously the remainder theorem, so instead of dividing this and then find a remainder, what you can do is grab this one, x minus 3 set equal to 0. And then evaluate a function at f of 3, and you'll get exactly the same answer. That might seem to be a mystery. Obviously, this author, this method is a lot quicker than the other method. It might seem to be a mystery, but it doesn't have to be. Recall this. If we have a 22, a simple division here, divided by 3, getting a 7 over there, 21, we have a remainder of 1. Another way to write this one is really saying 22 is equal to 3 times 7 plus 1. Plus 1 is the remainder. And what did we do for this big long division? Then we basically said, look, x squared minus 2 minus, minus x minus 2, that's the stuff inside, is really can be rewritten as x plus 2 times x minus 3 and then plus 4. Once you recognize this, remainder theorem is no longer a mystery. Because f of 3, then using this one, x plus 2, x minus 3 plus 4, evaluated x equal to 3, you'll see it has to equal to 4. Okay. So a division and remainder theorem is really the same because we just basically rewrote the dividend in there. Okay. Nothing else, nothing more. Okay, so let's take a quick math break. Let's see what I have for you today. What do I do? All right, back to math. The next question is a little more involved, and I would hope this remainder theorem made a lot of sense for you because we have f of x dividing by 6x minus 5. Well, we're trying to find out what the remainder is. Okay, this is a really nasty long division. Or what we can do is, of course, evaluate the special x. And that special x is 6x minus 5 equal to 0, which is saying we're going to evaluate at x equal to 6 over 5. On the next few minutes, we're going to show you that they end up to be exactly the same. And hopefully, by the end of this little clip, you will never do a long division to find a remainder. Okay, f of 5 over 6. It's equal to 5 over 6 squared minus 5 over 6 minus 2. And this one um, came out to be minus 77 over 36, which is pretty easy to do. Now, the long division, on the other hand, is a mean and nasty, long, tedious process. But hopefully doing it once, or watch me do it once, you'll be convinced that you would never use this long division to find the remainder. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is going to put a box here. I'm going to match the leading term, which in our case, fortunately, to be a fraction. Okay, 1 over 6 times 6x six is x squared. Minus 5 over 6x, I'm doing subtraction here. 
Okay, so this term becomes, um, let's say, minus x over 6. If you want to see the work, it's minus x minus minus, which is plus 5 over 6x. This one end up to be a minus x over 6. Okay. Minus 2 over here. I'm going to add a minus 1 over 36 because minus 1 over 36 times my 6x is equal to minus x over 6, which is this term I'm trying to do. This chunk of work is here. All right, minus x over 6, and then I have a minus minus plus 5 over 36. I'm doing subtraction over here. Subtract over here, so I have minus 2 minus 5, 36. And guess what's this one equal to? 36, and then 72 minus 5, both minus, and it's exactly minus 77 and 36. Okay, it's identical to this method. Okay, so by now I hope you're convinced that whenever you want to find a remainder, all you have to do is whatever this thing you're trying to divide, set it equal to 0. So you can find x equal to 6, 5, and then evaluate at this point to find the remainder. All right, instead of doing this big, long, ugly, long division. All right, I hope this is clear for you. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pam making learning math fun, at least trying to. If the video has been helpful, I would appreciate a comment or feedback. Until next time, have a confident day.